that was pretty special. They came and took photos of us. Um, so today we have potatoes and carrots and spinach, again from Heron Pond, the same as last month. Um, and the videos will be aired um, the third Wednesday of every month. So now I'm going to bring Tani in. Um, she's from Nourishing the North Shore and she was on last month's episode. So we'll bring her in right now and she'll help us get started on the recipe. So today we're making veggie sticks with the potatoes and carrots and then we'll be dipping them in a spinach and yogurt dip. So that's going to be really yummy today. Um, yeah, how does that sound? That sounds great. Maya, thank you so much mm -hmm. for having me, Tani Blasco, back from um, for another episode. We're so excited. Um, Nourishing the North Shore, where I am coming from today, um, is really, really proud to partner with Heron Pond Farm in our food access programs and to also connect the veggies with um, this cooking show. So thank you to the Newburyport Community Media Center for, um, for doing this, and I can't wait to yeah. get cooking. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, all right, so I guess we'll start with the potatoes and the carrots, and we'll peel them and then chop them up into kind of French fry shape, we're thinking. So for the veggie steaks, we're gonna be improvising on this recipe. I don't have a recipe for this. I'm just gonna make it up as we go along. And I do a lot of recipes like that at home, and I feel like you can become a better cook when you learn on your own and try new things instead of following recipes step by step. So um, I just feel like I've become a better cook that way. So I guess um, if you wanna make this recipe, you'll have to follow along. And I, I can do specific um, measuring teaspoons or half two spoons because we do have measuring spoons but um, so that that way you can follow along. Can I get peeling here? <laughs> yeah, let's get peeling. Okay. Yeah. So Tani, tell me about what's going on at Nourishing the North Shore. Oh, so much is going on. Yeah. We're, we're excited because the growing season is really starting to um, kick off and um, currently our team is very busy planning our pay what you can seedling sale mm -hmm. which is taking place at Riverwalk Brewery on Saturday May 18th and the sale will be from 10 to 3 p.m. there are so many awesome uh, seedling sales happening around this area in May which we're really lucky to live in an area yeah. where there are a lot of yeah. great farms and um, and gardeners and, and gardening groups uh, so definitely check out all the different ones that are going on. What makes the, our sale at Nourishing the North Shore a little bit um, distinct is that every single plant that is sold at our Pay What You Can seedling sale will benefit our food access programs. Mm -hmm. um, and also that it is a Pay What You Can model. Uh, so if you are a home gardener that is interested in getting plants, but um, might not necessarily feel comfortable with the cost. Mm -hmm. This is a really great opportunity for you to come and pick out seedlings um, and at, a, at an affordable um, at affordable place. Yeah. Well, in, ador in addition to the seedlings, we're also going to have um, some education opportunities. There's a lot of great resources around uh, tips for specific varieties of plants and um, and some activities for the kids keep them entertained uh, so it'll be a, a really fun family environment plus it's at the brewery so you can always yeah. after you get your plants go into the brewery and get a snack grab a beverage um, it's it should be a really fun event so what types of seeds are you selling I don't know if you mentioned that. yeah already. so our plant sale will ho have a lot of different varieties of herbs flowers and vegetables and all of the plants that we are growing for the sale are used, uh, are grown using Vermont compost soil, which really makes a huge difference when mm -hmm. you're trying to grow um, strong and healthy plants. We found that um, using really high quality soil is a big, it's gonna be a big difference yeah. in terms of the, setting your plants up for success. Um, so, so that's, and you won't have to, we won't have to fertilize in the very beginning because the plants are going to be getting so many of the nutrients they need mm -hmm. being grown right in that in that soil, mm -hmm. that compost. That's awesome. And yes. The seeds are from, are they local? Or? Yeah, so the yeah. seeds are from Johnny's um, Seeds Company primarily. And um, and then we have a couple other partners uh, that we, we connect with to mm -hmm. get some of the herb plants that we're going to be selling. Herbs tend to be really, really popular 
basil, yeah. parsley, cilantro. Definitely. Um, so there's going to be a nice variety of those available too. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, and one thing that's really exciting is we have an amazing group of volunteers at Nourishing the North Shore, and they are the ones who are helping to grow these plants. Mm -hmm. So for seven weeks leading up to the plant sale, we have um, a whole bunch of volunteers that are coming to the farm where we operate, which is Iron Ox Farm in Hamilton, Mass. And they're helping us germinate the seeds and water and care for all of the little baby plants um, to make sure that they are in the best shape possible for the sale taking place on May 18th. That's so exciting. <laughs> I think you're a little faster than me today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> okay, so we're peeled. Yep, we're peeled. And are we at the chopping stage? We are. Okay, yeah. fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. So this, this recipe is gluten-free, so people who are gluten-free will be able to eat this because there's no gluten in it, which is great. So um, it's really just vegetables and then yogurt and then some spices, nuts. Um, so it's, it's really gluten-free. Um, it's fun to get creative on the dietary is. restriction side. It you know, is. I have friends that have various dietary restrictions, and um, I'm still learning, absolutely. But it, I've, it's really fun to be able to get creative and figure out a way to make a substitute, because there usually yeah, always is, there a is a substitute. And there's more and more options available at, mm -hmm. um, at the grocery store. Yeah. So that's also good, too. Yeah, for sure. And you know what might be interesting if folks that are watching, um, if they have any specific call-outs in terms of things, dietary yes. restrictions that they would want to challenge us, right, right. maybe we could take that on yeah. and, um, and think and find menus that um, would work to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We just hosted a farm-to-table dinner Ooh. at Nourishing the North Shore nice. on Saturday. Um, and that event, we partnered with Lillooet Farm, uh, who provided lamb for the event. Wow. Um, but one of my challenges was making sure that we had the vegetarian option. So uh, were you the ones cooking it? Who was cooking oh, it? Oh, I was not cooking you it. You were not cooking it. I was planning okay. the event. Um, okay. But our incredible partner um, at Stacy Apple, who is, uh, who is a chef and also the, a co-owner of uh, Iron Ox Farm, she was our head chef along with Josh Smith um, of Talise Restaurant up in Anasquam. Oh, I've never so heard of that. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Uh, Talise really focuses on seasonal cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really good at using local vegetables. Yeah. And so it was really the perfect pairing to put together uh, a menu for, for this event. And all the proceeds from the, from the farm to table dinner go to benefiting Nourishing the North Shore and oh, our wow. food access programs. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so fun. Hmm. It's also just fun to like transform the greenhouse into a pop-up restaurant. Oh, true. It's very true. Yeah. So you were eating in the greenhouse? We were eating in the wow. greenhouse. Yeah. So what's next? Should we so do a little cleanup here? Yeah, we do a little cleanup. Let's okay. keep one of the cutting boards. I can keep this one out. Um, and then we can make our seasoning to put on the veggies. So awesome. Um, so because I'll be, I want to measure everything out for the viewers, um, I'll do exact measurements even though normally I'd probably just dump stuff in if I was at home. Thank you for those of us who love, <laughs> love a good plan. Um, should I undo these or do you want me to use them as is? Um, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Because if, usually I undo it because then if I don't use all of them, I don't have to wash all the things. Don't worry about that. Okay. I'll just wash them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so thinking three tablespoons of oil, what do you think? Yeah. Three. Okay, we'll start with three, and if we need more olive oil, we can add more. So we're going to, yeah, we'll start with three tablespoons of oil. And you've already preheated the oven, correct? I have correct? preheated the oven, yeah. I think I'll turn it up a little bit. I think I put it 300, but I'm thinking we'll do 400 degrees. You want me to this. turn that up right now? Sure, yeah. Okay. So we got the olive oil, and then... For seasonings, we'll do salt and pepper. We'll do some rosemary, some Italian seasoning, and garlic powder. So a bunch of stuff. Oh, and also nutritional yeast to give it some cheesiness. Mm. Yeah. Good call. So. Also gluten free. Yes, it is gluten free. So I know a lot, a lot of seasonings going on, but I feel like it will all taste so good together. Try what about it. the walnuts? Are you, are those being so chopped the walnuts, up at all? So they're actually Perfect. already chopped. This is for the yogurt dip. Okay. Yeah. Got everything here. 
So we'll do Italian seasoning. How about... Now we'll just make everything up as I go. Um, we'll do... Uh, I'll do a teaspoon of each. Does that great. sound good? Sounds yeah, great. Yeah, we'll do a teaspoon of each. Because I feel like we have, we have a lot of veggies in front of us, mm -hmm. so a lot to cover. And I'll put on some tin foil. Yeah. That tends to help with cleanup. It does. I, sometimes I use parchment paper or tin yep. foil. So the last time, um, like recently, like over the past month, um, I went to visit my parents in the Caribbean because they're oh, living wow. on their sailboat. Wow, and exciting. I know, you brought up fish and we ate a ton of fish there. Mm. It was really fresh, a lot of smoked fish, which I've only had uh, smoked salmon, but they had tons of other fish smoked. So that was That's really great. nice, yeah. What do you think about doing some different protein yeah, I'd love to. items in the future. I think it'd be really cool to go to um, the butcheries around town or local areas and try those out. That's great. Just to, and also to support them as a business because uh, you don't always want to go to the grocery store to buy your meat. And usually they're better quality at the butchers too, the meat markets. Yeah, definitely more pricey, but yeah. So I've done salt and pepper, garlic powder, Italian seasoning and rosemary. And now um, I'm just going to start with a fourth. And I'm going to put in the nutritional yeast actually. Okay, we'll do maybe two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. So now we're just going to pour this mixture onto the vegetables. Almost giving a pesto consistency. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Especially with the nutritional yeast, it, it almost acts as the parmesan. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now we'll just stir it. <laughs> a little hard to stir. Well, at I home, I would have used my hands if I was at mm -hmm. home, but I won't do that today. Another one of that would be helpful. Oh, yeah. Mix that up. Oh, yeah, that helps a lot. Nice. So, we just want to make sure that all the vegetables are covered um, with the mixture so it's uh, consistent throughout. I think that looks pretty good. It's great. It smells yeah. good already. It smells really good. Do you think we should add anything else? Any more oil? Maybe we have some on the pan we can put some on as a base. Sounds great. So it doesn't stick. Yep. And then we can get a paper towel to just wipe it around. Help a lot with mm -hmm. the sticking factor. Oh, yeah. For sure. Okay. All right. So now we'll just pour this on here. Wow. Gorge. <laughs> And then we want to make sure, if possible, that none of the vegetables are touching. That way, they'll get as crispy as possible. Because if they're touching, it will create condensation, and maybe the vegetables will get a little soggy. Not that they'll taste bad, but mm -hmm. more of a texture thing. We're pushing it. We could have a second <laughs> pan here. Yeah. But I think we can make it work. I think so, too. Now, how long are you thinking about roasting these? I'm thinking. 20 to 25 minutes, maybe 30. Okay. We'll see. We'll, we'll check on them, and then we'll just go from there as as they're cooking. And what do you think? We oh, we have a second pan. Do you want to split them up? Maybe we want to. What would you do? <laughs> well, to go with the, the piece of advice that you just yeah. gave, I would say there's a fair amount touching. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get the second pan. Because, okay. um, yeah, I just know from experience that it's... It is good to have a little space in the veggies. So definitely the crispier the better. I'm going to pour a little bit more oil Sounds in there. Good. And I'll just scoop over. Did I have that already? Here. Paper towel yeah, one way. Oh, there it is. You okay with me just putting some of these oh, on? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Washing 
Yeah, I think that was a good call. I really do. Here. Okay, you want to spread those out? Sure. Spread these out. All right, so now we're going to put them in the oven. Got it. Awesome, thanks. Of course. So right now the oven's set at 400 degrees, and we'll check in about 15 minutes, and then we'll rotate the pans because um, they're at different heights, so we want them to both get an even cooking, so we'll switch them 15 minutes and store them. Give them a little stir. Now we're gonna start to make the dip and Tanny's cutting up the garlic for it. We're gonna be using um, the spinach. We're gonna be using yogurt, salt and pepper, uh, some walnuts and dried mint. So that will be really yummy. We're gonna start on that. And so we're gonna be kind of mincing up the garlic and we'll be sauteing the garlic in some olive oil. So last month we made the vegetable soup and I did have to add a lot of salt um, mm. just because I needed salt and I, I do like a lot of salt mm -hmm. in my food. Okay. It's fake but it, it'll work. Yeah. Okay, garlic's yes. ready. Okay. So after we do that. We're gonna saute the garlic over medium low heat and then add the spinach and stir for a few minutes, but we're waiting until this, um, after the spinach has mm -hmm. been, bl been blanched. Yeah. So we're good there. We could measure out the other ingredients for the um, one fourth cup walnuts and then the dried mint. Mm -hmm. So I just um, took the sticker off of the packaging for where we got the veggies today, mm -hmm. Heron Pond Farm. Um, and they are located in Southampton, New Hampshire, which is just about six miles away from here, where we are at the, at the um, Newburyport Community Media Center mm -hmm. and the Senior Center here in Newburyport. And their um, slogan is building community through local agriculture. So thanks, Heron Pond Farm. My colleague Juliana is our um, programs manager, and she does all of the coordination of our food access programs. Heron Pond does both the farm share program that we do and the veg out program that mm. we do. Um, so the um, she has the primary interaction. Yeah. I get to do more of the development side yeah. to help with the fundraising yeah, of yeah, yeah. Um, our organization. So nice. yeah. So for our veg out program, which Heron Pond Farm partners with us on, we source vegetables from a variety of local farms in Northeast Essex County um, and also in uh, Southern New Hampshire. And in some cases, we purchase food directly from the farms, and in some cases, the food is donated. And so we source it, and then we process it. We, in some cases, we'll wash it, and then sort the vegetables based upon the needs of the individual food access partners mm -hmm. that we partner with. So we will take um, bulk deliveries to food pantries or soup kitchens, or senior centers um, and distribute the food to individuals in the community who are experiencing food insecurity. Mm -hmm. And in Northeast, Northeast Essex County, there's over 14,700 individuals who are currently experiencing food insecurity. Wow. You know, this area tends to be seen as a wealthy area. Um, the cost of living is really, really high. Mm -hmm. And when you partner that with child care, transportation costs, yeah. um, food costs, it, it really can add up. So being able to support individuals who are facing tough times and make sure that everybody in the community has access to high quality, nutritious food in a dignified way, mm -hmm. um, that's really at the core of what we're trying to do. So we also have three pop-up markets that we facilitate with our volunteers and through our staff where we distribute the food in a farmer's market style. Yeah. And one of those markets is right here at the Newburyport mm -hmm. Community Senior Center. Um, so once those programs get kicked off, I will definitely be talking more about them. Yes, a little strainer I'm gonna use. Oh, perfect. All right, so now we have our blanched spinach and this is a really hot pot. I'm gonna take um, a utensil and strain out the spinach, put it into this bowl. This thing. 
get all the water. Which, yeah, I probably should have just used a colander. That would have, it's, it's gonna be so much We're this far. Okay, true. Blanching is an interesting technique. I love blanching. Yeah. So the next step um, after I've got the spinach out of the pot is we're gonna flip the spinach. So we'll put that onto this cutting board. And there's a little water in here still, so I'm just gonna put it on like this. You can also move this garlic out of the way. Sure. So yeah, there's still quite a bit of water in here. Isn't that crazy how much this boils down though? Mm, it is. It's disappeared. And then you want this chopped up? Yeah, we'll chop it up. That's what the recipe says. Okay. Look how bright green that is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, shall we move over and, and yeah. put these on um, yeah. for saute? Yeah, so um, now we're gonna be sauteing the garlic and then we'll add the spinach in as that gets going. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here so that we can saute the garlic and then the spinach. And now I'll oh, turn the heat on. I think it's this one. Nope, it's this one. All right, so I'm gonna add the garlic now to the pan. It's getting hot, not super hot right now, but it will get up there. check on these vegetables. Ooh, that's horrible noise. Okay, I want to taste them because they do look cooked, but we'll try them and find out. feel cooked I can tell just by putting the fork in that they have a nice um, kind of mushy feeling. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Sure. It's hot. Hot. <laughs> really hot. Yeah we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> so the vegetables are done cooking so I'm going to turn the oven off now. Okay oven off. Ooh, the garlic sizzling. Mm. So now I'm adding in the spinach into the pan. There's the sizzle. There's the sizzle. Flavor-wise, yes. Yeah, flavor tastes 100%. great. 100%. So we'll let that cook for a few minutes. So we've taken the carrots and potatoes out of the oven. Look how good they look. So good. I, we do wish that they got a little bit more crispy, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on your oven, and I've never used this. Please comment mm -hmm. your favorite way to crisp up the veggies. Yes. That'd be super helpful. Broil is usually the way, mm -hmm. right? I think a broil potentially could have happened here, yeah. but we didn't want to risk too mush, yeah. <laughs> a mushy situation. Mm -mm. Flavor-wise, we're really liking how things are yeah. coming out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they have really good taste. Okay. So next we're going to finish up that yogurt dip. Um, I'm going to bring the cooked spinach and garlic back here and then we'll put it into a bowl and mix it with the yogurt. So nice fresh green spinach with the sauteed garlic. Very fragrant. Mm -hmm. Loving, loving that smell. Okay. So now we're going to add a cup of yogurt. I bought plain Greek yogurt, whole milk yogurt. So... We're gonna scoop a cup of this into here. I'm gonna do a little more than a cup. Um, okay. Maybe a little more than that. Okay. So we're gonna mix this up. And what goes in after the yogurt? So after the yogurt, um, we can put some salt and pepper and the walnuts and then the dried mint. Okay. And some olive oil. And I think that's a great idea. Yeah, we can drizzle some olive oil in. Would you like me to drizzle some olive oil in? Yeah, why not? Okay. Drizzle some in. Oh, that's kind of an extra that's amount. Perfect. <laughs> some mint. And how about a little salt and pepper? Yeah, let's do some salt and pepper. Salt 
salt, pepper to taste. Mm -hmm. And some walnuts. Oh, gosh. I this. It is just going to sprinkle in the walnuts. I think we should do more walnuts and use Let's try this out All first. Right, we'll and then we can always add more. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Try more walnuts? Just, I think let's try it. Okay. And then we can. And what about mint? Did we already, we I already added the mint. You already added the mint. I did. But we could always Is add it time? More. It's time. It's time All to right. taste it. All right, let's try it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Should we make a little. What? Are we going right in? Well, we won't double dip. So. We won't it's double okay. dip. Okay. No. All right. All right. Salud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's really you like good. It? I really like yeah, it. Me too. I think it's a nice, fresh mm -hmm. taste. It's really light. Light. Mm -hmm. Yep. And think about all the all the veggies, the spinach, mm -hmm. the carrots, the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Makes I'd make sense. this recipe again. Me too. I would eat this all day. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for watching Wholesome Harvest with Maya. Um, again, thanking Tani from Nourishing the North Shore. This has been an awesome episode. And stay tuned for the release date of next month. It will be the third Wednesday of the month. Thanks again for having me too. Mm -hmm. um, and let us know what you think of the recipe. Yeah. Um, and we appreciate everybody watching. Thank yeah. you. Bye.